I, I was a young man at the time. I just didn't believe it. I just, I just found it to be incredible. You know, I mean, they were white people. What was, you know, so I thought there was, <laughs> I couldn't see what the rub was. But as I've grown older, I've come to understand how difficult that journey was. And I've come to understand that anti-Semitism never really went away. You know, you got a great character in the book, Chelga. And I assume it's pretty much based on your grandmother, is that right? Uh, pretty much. I mean, she was, she inspired it. You know, my grandmother uh, was Chet Polio. She lived in the South and her husband didn't really love her. And she didn't have a lot of love in her life, so. And she was Jewish and spoke Yiddish. Oh yeah, she didn't speak English, she spoke Yiddish, yeah. My, my grandmother, you know, who I never met, uh, was lived a very difficult life. She was born in Poland. She came here as a young mother with my with my mother and my uncle. And Chona in the book is somewhat that way, right? Well, well Chona was see, Chona was happy, and Chona Chona was able to. She had a husband who loved her, and she was able to accept elements of American life that my grandmother never got to experience. And you say of Chona in the book, she had not an ounce of bitterness or shame. I think that's your sentence. And you say something like Chona was an American, unlike uh, Moshe, the other character. Explain what you meant by that. Well, there was, now I don't want to insult people who are Jewish and they say, well, my grandmother, by God, you know, so I'm just talking about my characters. <laughs> Let's talk about Jewish people across the world. But... In, in this case, Chona being an American was not a greenhorn. My mother used to talk about the fact that she had she was considered a greenhorn because she was new to America. She hadn't been here. The, some of the, some of the Jews in my mother's life who had been here looked down on Jews who came from Eastern Europe and they were considered you know European and thus greenhorn. So Chona had already separated some of the old world ways and accepted some of the new world ways that most she had not yet adopted or, adap or adapted to. You know, uh, there's a character too in the book called Malachi, and I think that means messenger from God. And you have uh, Malachi say to Moshe in the book, or uh, Malachi says to Moshe, we are integrating into a burning house. Your book is quite a bit about integration. What do you mean about the burning house part? Well, I, I, you know, I lifted that straight from the lips of, of Martin Luther King because I call him Malachi. Some people call him Malachi. But Malachi was, he, he did not like America. And he wanted to return to Europe because he was an Orthodox, very orth, Orthodox Jewish person who couldn't accept the ways of America. And he felt that by Jewish people from the new country, from the old country coming to America, adopting American ways, leaving behind the kosher life, the Yiddish language and so forth. We're integrating into a house where materialism and greed uh, would only lead to suffering. And uh, so he leaves. So that's what I meant there. And he happens to utter that when he's looking at a group of black workers who are do working and they're talking about I guess, the integration in American society. You know, you say that in the books, and you got it in The Color of Water, and now in this new book, they have it in Earth Grocery Store, and it shows the complexity of black and Jewish relations, which over the past you know, few centuries has been complex, and yet you make it seem like it can work when you're thrown together. Explain that. Look. When Louis Armstrong died, he was a champion. He was conceived. His music went around the world. And I remember reading Louis Armstrong's story, or many of the many things that were written about him, and he said he never forgot the kindness of this Jewish family that he worked for when he was a kid in New Orleans. And that stayed with him. In my opinion, the kindness that they showed him, he let that into his soul, and it came out in his music that went around the world. So it's real simple. If you you decide, you know, the sum of your life is what you pay attention to. He could have said, oh, I remember this Jewish family I worked for, and they were cool, but, you know, I mean, I, I had to make it. My music is about whatever. But he understood what was important. 
And to the end of his life, he was accessible to all people. And until the end of his life, he wore that Star of David that the Karnofsky family you talked about gave him. But one of the interesting things was they grew up in the same neighborhood. And that's what happened in New Orleans back then, around 1900. And it happens in your books, is that we're all in the same neighborhood. Haven't we started to self-sort and it's going to make this more difficult? Um, well, the Internet has made it more difficult. And where the, where, the, where the true integration happens is in schools. And so when you start separating the rich from the poor, no matter what color they are, the kind of community that you're creating is the kind of community where creativity is dead. Because creativity happens when people who are different come together and realize their differences are the, the, the diesel fuel, if you will, or the electricity <laughs> that powers the motor. And, um, and if you're smart enough, if you're raised right, you will respect these differences and celebrate them as your own if you feel like it. Because that's what makes this country great, is our creative impulses.